Hi, my name is Jude Madelich Hall, and this is Titles, Talk, and Tipples. My guest today is Adam Stump, pen name A. Stump, the writer of The Endless Summer. Thank you, Adam, for joining me today. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Jude. And I will try to avoid uh, Beatles references because I'm sure that you've gotten <laughs> that your entire life. So, <laughs> Well, luckily, I like the Beatles. <laughs> and, it, and it is a great song. You know, I it think is. I think it would be horrible if I didn't like that song. <laughs> I, I think so. That would be like a curse. Uh, yeah. You know, you could, have a, you could have a name like me because my last name is Stump. And so like half of the people that I've met in my lifetime, when they find out that my last name is Stump, they always say, hey, Stumpy. Like they're the very first person to ever think of that. <laughs> and I wish that I could say that like that was only in childhood, but it's even adults who do that. It's oh, wow. Just, Oh, like, interesting. So, <laughs> so you, know, you have a good name. I, I have a <laughs> short squat name. So. <laughs> yeah. so what are we drinking today? We are drinking, uh, well, I have mine here. You have your uh, your very lovely teapot, but it is Pal Darko tea. I have well, to you know what? We um, won't use that because it's a brand oh, name. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. all right. <laughs> so, you can edit that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Here, I'll, this this doesn't have a brand name on it. I won't show it. So, um, yeah. but this is actual ground up bark from the tree, like just pure bark. And so, that's actually what I drink. And um, I wish I could show it to you, but I'm going to spill it. It's like yeah, brown. Um, we, it's like ditch water. Is what. <laughs> is yeah. What it looks like. so, there you go. There like you go. Ditch water. Yeah. Very barky. It is. It's it's got a really earthy flavor. I like it. Um, but then again, I like weird things. So um, so. But I I did not start drinking it because I liked it. Um, I actually I have other tea here that I won't show you because it's got brand names on it. But uh, Moulin Leaf Tea, Turmeric Ginger Tea. Oh, yeah. um, I like a lot of the herbal teas, uh, and I started drinking those for health reasons, and that's why I drink this. Um, and. Uh, I, I actually learned to like it when I first tasted it. I was like, "Wow, this tastes like dirt <laughs> in, in a in a cup." And now I actually I'm used to it and I, I enjoy it. So nice. it's a nice warm beverage. Yeah. So potty arco tea. Yeah. So cheers. Cheers. Tink. <laughs> Tink. All right. So Adam, we are both writers. Um, you have been in the world a lot longer than I have. I'm just breaking out, and um, but you are also an editor. And mm -hmm. you're, put, you're actually putting an anthology together right now. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you what. I've been writing now. I've been writing for a while. I probably started writing in 2016, but I didn't start publishing anything until 2018. Okay. Um, and uh, I mainly write short stories. Um, and uh, after, after working uh, with getting a lot of short stories published, uh, I, I, I would submit to just like online journals and things like that, magazines and everything, and I'd get stuff published. And then I began submitting to anthologies. And after I submitted to a few anthologies and was accepted, I thought, boy, you know, maybe I could work on an anthology. And so uh, the very first anthology that I worked on um, was actually uh, uh in the Sci-Fi Roundtable uh, was a wonderful anthology which was headed up by Shane Thomas and unfortunately he is no longer writing, he's pursuing some other things, uh, but he, uh, he uh, got this together and asked if I would help him edit and Stephanie Barr also helped oh, yeah. edit. Uh, yeah, and so uh, she and I took like half the stories and edited them, and then Shane did sort of the final edit and put it all together and formatted it. And so this is the book right here, and uh, it actually has the full novella from Robert Louis Stevenson, uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and then it has uh, a bunch of other uh, retellings. And my friend, uh, fellow author N.D. Coley, actually has like a sequel to it. Uh, he wrote an epistolary tale, uh, which is uh, basically it's a story through letters, or like written letters. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and like it's a the, sequel. Much like the original was written, right? Much like the original, yeah. exactly. He took that and he ran with it. And so it actually takes place after The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 
And it's, it, it was just wonderful. And so, so I learned an awful lot about editing there. And, and I've read all of them except the original, but I think I read the original. That's where my bookmark is. I read hey, the original long ago. So I'm like, oh, I've got other things to read. The I'll have to get back to that. So. That's, it. <laughs> you know. That's it. Poor, well, you know, enough people have read Robert Louis Stevenson. Yeah. So, you no. know. No, no, I recommend reading the original. I, I have he read take it. a back burner <laughs> to the indie authors. Right. I, uh, He's dead. You won't hurt his feelings. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I know I've read it probably several times. So, I mean, I know the story quite well. So yes. I was yes. like, I'll, I'll get to it. I just wanted to read all my friends' stories. And, yeah. So yeah. Really cool. Um, I, I will say it's interesting because, you know, a lot of people misunderstand the original novella um, of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And they think Jekyll is a good guy and Hyde is a bad guy. And right. that's not really the case. They're both bad <laughs> um, <laughs> right. because Jekyll wants to be bad, but since society prevents that, he creates Hyde for that. So a lot of people don't understand that. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, that's a really important thing. And like the story that I wrote that's in this book, um, I, I really lean on that. And uh, Hyde might be the manifestation of the evil, but Jekyll is really the driving force, and uh, yeah, and so which makes him actually more evil. I exactly, doesn't it? I mean, you know, it's like man, you know, yeah, yeah, he's like a snake. The face he's showing to society is the upstanding, you know, um, <laughs> doctor, right? And, um, and secretly, well, this like. I don't know. This goes on a lot in real life too, right? It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, fact is stranger than fiction, I think. And, and I think a lot of people, you know, um, I, I hate to say it because it sounds very pessimistic, but I think it's more realistic. Um, I think a lot of people are good mainly because society won't allow them to be bad. Um, yes, yeah. I'm not going to say the majority of people. I think that that's not quite true. I think the majority of people are probably relatively neutral, morally <laughs> yeah. speaking. Uh, but, um, but I think there, there's a pretty good percentage of people who would probably commit crimes if there were no punishment for oh, them. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's, that's sad, but uh, it's good story fuel, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I good, like it. bad, pessimism, optimism. You know, we're kind of, I think a lot of us dwell in the, in the middle somewhere. In, yeah, in the gray, in the gray, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a magazine out called Sci-Fi Lampoon. Um, which was put together, uh, which was a project put together by a man named G.D. Deckard, um, who was in the Sci-Fi Roundtable group. And um, I was actually the editor-in-chief for the very first issue of that. Um, and, uh, and I spent some time after that on the editorial uh, board, if you want to call it. Um, but uh, a lot of things, including COVID, took me away from that project, and I'm working to get back in a, a little bit with that group. Um, but uh, it's a magazine uh, based in speculative fiction. And so that was really interesting because you get a lot of different genres in there. Uh, even though it's called Sci-Fi Lampoon, we, they do publish suspense humor uh and because of course lampoon that must be funny right <laughs> it is yeah and it's it's not just you know it's not just comedy although there are some really really funny pieces um it's also satire you know there's that oh, satire yeah. element in the lampoon i write um, satire yeah yeah and so uh so so but that that was a fun project to work on um and uh, i'll tell you what getting that first issue off the ground um man that was a lot of work. Uh, I don't think people realize how much work getting a new publication together actually is. Um, but I worked uh, on, a, on a couple other projects and then I decided, you know, um, uh, I really, uh, I got sick uh, back when COVID first came to the US uh, in early 2020, either April or May, I actually got ill. Um, and uh, uh, as far as I know, I was the first person in Western Pennsylvania to develop uh, COVID long haul syndrome. Oh, uh, and uh, I've not so, heard of this. yeah, so what's that? I haven't heard of this. Oh, you haven't heard of it. Okay. No. Uh, so, so what they're finding is um, uh, people who had COVID 
especially people who had mild cases of COVID, um, began developing some very strange symptoms um, uh, afterward. And uh, these symptoms would last for weeks or even months. And um, I actually bounced back from the illness really quickly, only to develop these really strange symptoms and I didn't really get well from them until October. So I had COVID in May and then I developed all these symptoms and didn't get over it till October. Some of the symptoms um, that I still deal with actually are um, blood pressure and blood sugar issues. Uh, there, there are two of them and I still have trouble regulating those. Um, I have to really actively uh, control those, um, but also brain fog, uh, memory loss, extreme fatigue, uh, tremors, and I still have tremors, uh, which eh, my hand's shaking a little bit, but usually in the mornings I wake up and when, it's almost like I have Parkinson's when I wake up in the morning. Uh, it's really bad. Um, and so that really incapacitated me um, because of my brain fog. There, there, there were months that went by where I, I couldn't read anything, let alone write, because I just couldn't oh, yeah. focus and concentrate on it. I'd read the same paragraph 20 times and just chuck the book down because I couldn't retain it, um, which of course for a person like me, I had a really good memory. Like it was, it was traumatic because I stopped remembering. Um, and there are, there are, you know, uh, whole periods during that time that I still have no memory of. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's really hard to deal with. Um, uh, so, so I stopped doing everything, stopped writing, stopped reading, stopped editing, um, uh, and, uh, and sort of just worked on getting healthy again. Yeah. Um, and, uh, as soon as I, as soon as I got rid of the long hauler syndrome, um, I actually developed another really strange, uh, uh, uh illness called auto brewery syndrome, which is an overgrowth of yeast and bacteria in your guts. Right. And, and it causes fermentation. And that's actually why I drink this tea now because it's antibacterial. Um, uh, and so I do that on top of all of my other medications and, and supplements to kill off the yeast and the bad bacteria. And what happens is your gut ferments, which means that it creates its own alcohol. Yeah, so you're uh, going to get drunk off of eating a cookie. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, you know, and so now, I mean, we had no idea why, you know, my, my wife was like, uh, she, she was like, you know, your breath smells like alcohol. Have you been drinking? And I was like, no, I haven't had anything to drink. You know? Um, and, and so, uh, and I would start slurring my speech. Um, I wound up going to the ER several times with an ethanol level, uh, you know, like oh around 300, which is blackout and coma <laughs> levels, yeah. uh, for, for alcohol. And so, uh, we realized something weird was going on. And, uh, and finally uh, found a doctor in Texas. I, I'm in Northwestern Pennsylvania and I'm being treated by a doctor in Texas. So, um, you know, thank God for the internet, thank, you know, Zoom and phone calls and everything because I don't actually have to go to Texas. I can, you know, talk to him on the phone and he can order tests and things like that. But it's been a long, strange journey. Um, and, uh, and health is very important. And I never realized that until I became unhealthy uh, when I developed a chronic illness and even now I, I'm not fully free. I don't think of either of those things, either long haul syndrome or the auto brewery syndrome. So, um, I've really been living a very restrictive lifestyle. Um, but, uh, th that's been, that's been really tough, really tough, but I will say I'm getting better. And so I am writing again, I am reading again, and I am editing again. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I have a current project, which is a youth slash young adult, uh, anthology mm -hmm. sci-fi themed, and it's called galactic dreams. And so, um, the submissions are closed for it right now, but I'm beginning to read them. And, uh, and so, uh, one thing that I will say about submitting. Uh, oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do your homework. <laughs> yeah, read. Read the submission guidelines, people. I'm, I'm talking to you, the people who are out there watching this. Uh, read the guidelines and follow them. Uh, um, everybody has different guidelines. If yes. you're one of those writers, like I have, every time I come across a new um, magazine or anthology or something, I star it. I have lists of publications and next to them, I, I make, because 
it was getting so difficult to sit there and it was taking so much time to read the submissions and then I'd, I'd read them and then I'd come back to that publisher and, and of course I'd forget so I'd have to read the submissions again for the next story. I finally right. just in the little file I have the word count <laughs> you know, like next to the name of the magazine I got totally organized because it was <coughs> you know, taking 10 minutes every time to read the submissions. And uh, you know everybody wants a different word count. Everybody mm -hmm. wants it formatted a different way. You know, yeah. I even um, some of them have gotten tricky too because they want to be sure people are reading them. So right. they'll like they'll like say, "Do not use such and such a font, or do use this font, like a specific font that they want, right. just to know that you're reading their submission guidelines." <laughs> so very That's important. <laughs> yes, yes, and you know, and I think you know what you're doing with keeping sort of a file on it. That makes a lot of sense, especially if you plan on submitting to a lot of different places. Um, and you know, uh, reading and remembering, or at least knowing where to get the information for the guidelines, is your friend. Um, keep it organized, because I will say, you know, I think a lot of writers tend to be pretty sloppy. Um, uh, with with their submitting, and even if they're a good writer, um, there's no excuse for not following the rules. You know, um, uh, I, I think you know the rules are there for a reason. And what I found is, um, I had pretty clear cut submission guidelines for my current project that I'm working on because I found out what works for me uh, with publishing. Um, how to format, how to do things. I found out what works for me the best and that's why I have those guidelines. And so, you know, I'm not getting paid for this unless the book sells. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so it's like, I'm doing all of this work, you know, front work, I'm doing it all for free. And so if they don't follow the guidelines, it makes more work for me Absolutely. So the format. And so you're not doing the editor any favors and, uh, by, by doing your own thing. And so, um, so I, you know, I learned that the hard way because, uh, I did, uh, with one of my projects, I did accept just anything formatted anyway. And when I went to put it all in a program, I had like a boatload of extra work to do. And I'm like, this, this is stupid. So, um, <laughs> So, you know, uh, so, so if you're submitting, you know, uh, follow the guidelines. That's, that's the number one, number one, uh, you know, recommendation that I have as an editor. Yeah. The number two recommendation is um, read. read. Read the publication you're submitting to. Oh, yeah. To which you are submitting would be proper. <laughs> <There> you, <go. laughs> um, you know, read the publication <laughs> which you are submitting. You know, um, I, I think uh, you know a lot of people just say, "Hey, I've got this great story, and and, and everybody's yeah. going to want to publish it," and then right, they just yeah. chop it out. And if you're submitting something to a publication that doesn't publish what you're submitting, of course they're going to reject it. Um, so I would you know the publication. Ahead. That's great. Definitely. And I will say this, you know, as uh, going back to editing as an editor for submissions, if an author can make me feel their story, I'll publish it. Yeah. Um, if I don't feel their story, it doesn't matter how well written it is. doesn't matter how flowery their prose is or how good their grammar is. If I'm not connecting on an emotional level, I don't want to publish their work. So yeah. that's, that's really important. So. Very important. Yeah. And following guidelines. <laughs> following guidelines. <laughs> following guidelines. Can't stress that enough. So I do have a little story about that, which which almost uh, goes goes against that following guidelines thing. But it, I mean, it did end up. Anyway, I'll, I did my homework all the time. I told you how um, organized I wa I am, and. Um, but somehow a story slipped through and I sent a 5,000 word story to a magazine that only takes 2,500 word stories, oh. 3,000 at the most. And you know, I got the letter back saying, well, this is a good story, but it's too long. Do you have something shorter? So I'm like, okay. oh wow. So it was good enough that they wanted something shorter, but they were definitely rejecting that story. And um, I didn't have anything shorter. And I mentioned I'm, I'm finishing up a novel right now. So, you know, I'm not writing any short stories right now. I'm sorry, I don't have something that length. They wrote back and said, 
send us your novel. <laughs> and I had, I had stopped sending out my novel because I was editing it again because I had been rejected so many times. But long story short, I sent in my novel and they accepted my novel. So, so my publisher, yeah. So that's that who awesome. White, White Cat Publications is who the <clears throat> publisher is right now. I, that is, my publisher that is, is. awesome story. But, uh, <laughs> but it's a like, you know, right there. yeah, it's like, so I didn't follow the guidelines, not, not purposefully just ignoring them. I think I got, I was, it was one of those days, I think I'd sent it out to like 10 different places in the same day and I think I got a couple guidelines mixed up which I I honestly don't know how I did it <laughs> you know it's like how did that slip through I never let that happen but uh it turned out okay so that's good that's still good follow guidelines, but. <laughs> still follow guidelines but if you accidentally break them and they want to read your novel instead that's a good right. thing <laughs> but you know it's like that's to say to a good story it's like, don't purposefully not follow guidelines, but a good story is going to get you, get you in. That's right. That's right. Or another.